The following documents and recordings are the second instalment in a compilation detailing the events the repair team sent to Outpost Freestead, consisting of Dr. Rosa Della Torre, Walter Heath, Graham Kasner, Dr. Karina Schumacher Weiss, and Jonas Thorninson. In the winter months, gale storms in Svalbard can reach wind speeds of 130 km per hour. Accompanied by or following snowfall, such storms can reduce visibility dramatically more so in the frigid months of the polar night. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Vault. Following the previous instalment, the assessment and repair team still waits out the gale, occupying their time and minds with the idea of exploring the tunnel beneath the auxiliary storage bunker. This first note comes from the pile of discarded papers collected from, around and beneath the bed of Dr. Schumacher Weiss. Heute gehen wir in die Höhle. Es ist lange her, dass ich an geologischen Feldarbeiten beteiligt war. Aber die meisten Sicherheitsprotokolle einer Today we're going in the caves. It has been so long since I have undertaken geological field work, but I remember many of the safety protocols. Well enough anyway. I'm interested to see what they have found, be it mines or caves. Generally, I'm more interested in freeing myself from the boredom of this concrete prison. It is our shelter from the gale raging outside, but there are only so many card games one can play. And only so many times I can enjoy the comedic violence of the British zombie movie. I miss Rolf dearly. He knows that my return is at an indeterminate time, but I am so excited for the proposal, for our new house, for the future we will build together. Though I fear the limited work I have undertaken for this expedition may not translate to a job with Seizure Group. It was Papa's birthday yesterday. I hope he liked the gift. Now, an audio track from Mr. Heath's camcorder. The accompanying video has been corrupted, as well as two other files. Say hello to the camera, Karina. Hello. We are at Outpost Freestead in Spitzbergen, Svalbard. The team has been inside for days, so today we are going into the tunnel that Kassner and Rosa found under the storage bunker. The uh, auxiliary bunker? Yes. We have prepared our items and will head out soon. Tell the people at home, what are we packing? What's it like outside? We're in the middle of Svalbard, so it's fucking cold. Latest reading says... Uh, let's see... Uh, minus 13 degrees. Is this Fahrenheit or Celsius? Uh, but it will feel much colder though, with wind chill? Like, minus 20. The storm has not let up, so... So that's why we're all looking like puffy burnt marshmallows. These snowsuits keep us not dead. And what are we packing? Let's see. We have rope, light, ice axes, crampons. And Kessner has the required Svalbard polar bear shotgun. We have our packs with some water and food, as well as emergency chemical lights. I look totally fit for Huren's one. <laughs> and that is some word for cave exploring, I'm guessing. What are you most excited about? Svalbard has a really rich geological diversity. I hope to get some noticeable insights into the local area's geological structure. Svalbard is good for this, as there's so little covering the topmost surface rock, but it will be interesting to get down within the caves and get a look. It is most interesting because I believe we will be traveling in a system beneath the glacier. Are you ready back there? Nearly. Come on, zip up. And I recommend capping that camera until we're out of the storm. It looks fairly new. Yeah, got it just before the trip. We are heading out now. Are you sure you want to stay here, Jonas? Yes, please. The wine last night disagrees with me. Well, it's good practice to leave someone here at all times, regardless. Stay on the radio, Jonas. <sighs> We're still waiting to hear back from the Allison. Remember what I showed you? Yes, yes, please, so I can sleep. Just sleep near the radio. Let's go.
Everyone, listen. The stairs are narrow, so use the handrail. Everyone turn on your flashlights. No, you won't need your crampons yet. Keep the axes attached to your packs for now. Leave space between you and the person ahead of you, or you'll walk into someone's pick end. <laughs> you should know how to hold an ice axe, but just remember, if we do need them for walking, hold the head end with the pick end back. If I say to stop or give you an order, just do it. Do you want to attach rope now, or later? The handrail continues into the tunnel for a while. We'll attach it to the end. I'm more concerned with the cave system. Let's get moving, but don't go too fast. We don't know what we'll find the further we go. These do seem to be mining tunnels. If you inspect the floor, there looks to even be tracks, though I see no remaining equipment. It will be like this for about a kilometer. It becomes caves after that. You were pretty correct. East by northeast. We should be heading directly toward the coordinates the rovers were missing the data on. If there's a mining shaft there, it would make sense for them to leave the coordinates out of the data set so as not to skew it. You may want to put the camera away, Walter. It will be a while before we reach the caves. Yes, it's just dark walls now anyway. Uh, Walter Heath, signing off for now. Watch your step. Well, we've reached the start of the caves. We've walked for about half an hour until the scaffolding and mine became, well, this. Uh, the caves are intricate, many crevices and smaller passages. Overall, what I would expect from a cave, though I don't see many of those pointed stacked stalagmites or stalactites I see so often in pictures. I don't see any water dripping, or as you say, spiliothems. So perhaps the glacier doesn't drain through these caves. Kazna tied the first rope off to the last man-made rail a while back. There's a slight downward slope, but we haven't seen any steep drops or dangerous avenues as of yet. Do you think we'll get to use the ice axe? Shh. Quiet. Sorry. Not currently. Well, further down we go, so powering down. Oh, new update. Uh, Kazna says he sees light up ahead. God. Are you seeing this? What is this place? This! This is what the missing data was hiding. Shit. Why is it blue? <laughs> Seriously? You find an abandoned village under the glacier and your first question is about the color? Walter, this is an archaeological find. This looks... old. Ancient. Look at the building structure. They look like little homes. The earliest settlements on the island's archipelago were on the coast. Whaling stations, I think. Yes, whaling stations, a few early exploration camps, nothing permanent until the 1900s, with the mining. I count over four dozen of these stone huts. How? By pointing and counting. No, I mean, why is it blue? This is massive. How can you see far enough to count the fucking things? Oh, he's right. Look. The glacier is like... Some kind of dull blue light. You think it's glowing? No, but maybe some kind of parabol reflector. A parabolic reflector still requires a light. This is not a normal cave formation, regardless. Well, not to tell you your business, but this doesn't look like a standard cave, Karina. No, you're correct. Look at the walls, the curve. Graham, what are you doing? While it's nice to hear you all talk about the cave, I'm more interested in what's in it. Look at those buildings. They look intact. We don't know who or what is down there that doesn't want company. You think there are bears? Maybe. I don't have enough experience with old under-glacier stone settlements to make an assessment. Are we going down there? We must. Should we not document and report such a find? I googled Svalbard extensively before my flight. I never heard of this. Do you have it on camera, Walter? Well, sort of. Can you let me squeeze through? I'm not certain how the video will show up. It mostly sees dark and blue. 
Is that a disposable camera? Yes. So as Walter asked, are we going down there? Tomorrow, we'll come back with the proper gear for the descent. We marked the path through the caves and should be able to get here in better time. <laughs> Careful! Remember your ice axe! It appears Mr. Heath shut down his camera for most of the walk back through the caves. The following is an entry written by Mr. Thorninson while stationed back at Outpost Freestead. It was written on the transmission report pad, slid under the largest receiver in Mr. Thorninson's atypically heavy penmanship. Ideas for the twins' birthday. Picnic at park. Movie fort at home. Ask the neighbors to let them ride the ponies. Scavenger hunt around the house. I wonder if Hilda would be okay with a puppy. Why did I drink the wine? Regardless, I slept for several additional hours this morning, and I am feeling better. The others went to look into the hatch Kastner found to the storage bunker. I'm sure they are fine. Rosa and Kastner are very capable. Perhaps Karina is uh, overly zealous in her geological evaluation. I grow more worried about the others as time continues to pass, though. I'll give them until 1600 to return. Walter has shown me how to operate the radio. Sadly, I forgot how to record. Around 10.30, the radio clicked, and I believe somebody was trying to reach us. It started transmitting static. I responded, but the return was more of the static. About four minutes after it started, something else began. Some kind of a voice. I recorded it on my phone as soon as the static began. This sound file was on Mr. Thornison's cell phone. An old, sturdy flip phone. The recording quality is lacking. We now return to Mr. Thornison's written notes. What was that? I bet it was Walter. He seems like a jester type, perhaps a section from one of his movie collections. Is there even a tunnel into the hatch? Well, they haven't fooled me. My tolerance for mischief has risen significantly since the girls were born. Is there more coffee? Another group recording was found on Mr. Heath's laptop. It was in a desktop folder labelled Svalbard Findings and contained multiple audio recordings. Is this not a jest? Show me the video. Well, take a look. The camera's on the shelf next to the coffee tin. Just plug it back in when you're done. Jonas, wait until you see it before you judge. It was astonishing. Non ponadabitza parakrukov molotok moto. Veryovki, Toporiki, Albanitski, Akoshki, Blin, Yalushka Zabishu. What, Kastner? Well, the drop down into the cave looks just under two meters, but the landing looked icy and sloped. Once we get to that small landing, there's less than a meter of space available before the angled descent down into the cave floor. I'll need to attach a line and some pitons to get us down there safely, and back up into the passage for a safe return. Any ideas what it was? How did it get under the ice and that light? There are many Mayan ruins I've seen back in Mexico, across the Yucatan, with stone huts like those. These are different though, different stone. Looks so old. What is that? You found that? What is that? I, I want to go. I want to see it. I'm making coffee. Get the uh, Aquavit bottle from the cupboard, too. That stuff? Should we really be drinking? I am doesn't mean you have to. So, do you think it's an old settlement? Oh, maybe Viking? No evidence. But that looked like it, right? Stone huts? Cold Nordic places? Vikings were a ship people. Why go so far inland? No, not Vikings. Well, we're not the experts. It may as well have been. Kessner is correct. 
There has never been any physical evidence of Vikings here. All the people who come to Svalbard stay on the coast. Even today there is not many permanent settlers. The only people to come inland are exploration expedition, researchers and tourists. So perhaps a lost inland exploration team from the 1600s? Keilhau. Gesundheit. <laughs> Keilhau. He was a famous Norwegian geologist. Keilhau Fjellet, the mountain in southern Spitsbergen, was named after him. He and his team were some of the earliest interior explorers, and even that expedition was as late as the 1800s. Guessing will do us no good. We will go back tomorrow to look more. Maybe there are things there that will help, like tools or something. Coffee? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. There must have been earlier people here. Well, there were the whalers, but they stayed on the shores. Generally poor whaling inland. Thanks. Jonas, any ideas? No, Karina is correct. Then we must find more information. We will tomorrow. Or now, drink coffee, eat food, and warm your bones. The blue color, it's rather striking. Karina and Rosa had some ideas regarding the, um, the glacial, the parabolic effect of the glacial ice above. It would still need light from somewhere. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Why does a Sigia group outpost have a tunnel leading to an old underground settlement site? And why has said settlement not been reported to the government? Sigia Group does have some interest in archaeological research back in Iceland, but it's only to determine whether or not the land will be available for future exploration. You think they hide it so they can mine here? The reports I read... There is almost nothing to mine in this area. Not cost-effective. They work with universities, though. Yes, many. Oh, shit. This recording ended abruptly. Dated that evening is a typed digital note regarding the day written in Mr. Heath's personal journal, most likely an unsent email awaiting the folder labeled documentation. I spilled coffee on my laptop earlier, but it appears to be in working condition again. Now, for the fun part. We found something today. Kasner found a hatch in the storage building nearby. Yesterday he and Rosa explored it a bit, and today we went to go take a look further down the tunnels. It's quite the labyrinth down there. Kasna has relevant experience with these activities, so we tied a line and went exploring. I guess we were travelling downhill with every step, because what we found was under the ice. We walked into this massive cave, at least five stories to the ceiling, and it was the glacier. The whole ceiling is just this massive blue glacier. We must have been kilometres away and several hundred metres down. It took us a couple of hours to reach the little entrance we found. It's a town as well. There are little stone houses like the crumbling ones I saw up in Scotland, but in great condition. Some are built into the walls, others freestanding. We didn't drop into the cave yet, as Kasner wants to make sure we're prepared. Generally, that's appreciated. We've made some rather wild conjectures regarding the cave and its buildings. I lean toward the lost unnamed explorers setting up camp for the winter line of thought. Karina is certain that any such loss would have been noted in history, but there is much history has forgotten. Or Vikings. It could always be Vikings. The following note was found between the bed and nightstand of Mr. Thorninson. A morgun. Tomorrow, be sure to tell them about the recording you took of the radio. Ask how to use the radio again. This concludes those documents related to the day of the discovery. This completes the third collection of information regarding the repair team at Outpost Freestead. The White Vault, 